went to heaven. And we testified to the great work of God through them. And but their work was done not by them, but, but by God. And we are not expecting for God to do some greater works in the coming days. We are expecting for the days of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, two things happened at the same time on the day of Pentecost. One is that they were given the Holy Spirit, and the other is that was that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Those two things happened together in the same time. You know, but when we are saved, we are given the Holy Spirit, but now uh, uh, we will be, we will get baptized in the Holy Spirit as we pray and as we obey Him. But on the day of Pentecost, those two things happened at the same time. It was the day when the special work of the powerful work of God happened. You know, when we are given the Holy Spirit, we are convicted. We are shown our sins, and we are able to get to know Jesus better. And when we read the Bible, uh, we are given a lot of help through the Holy Spirit, so we will understand what's written in it. And also, uh, we are able to opt to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it has some something to do with the fruit of the Holy Spirit as it's written in the book of Galatians, love, joy, peace. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of God. And the point, important point thing here is sanctification of ourselves. So th this has some th something to do with the whole Christian life. Uh, what, oh, you know, we when we are given, uh, oh, you know, when we are given the Holy Spirit, we will start operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we all start to be sanctified by God. Uh, as, as is written in the Bible, um, th they started to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and also they started to bear fruit in, of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, many of you. How many of you haven't? Oh, you, you might hesitate to raise your hands. Maybe almost all of you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. As for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is the will of God for us to to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because the ba God says that we He will give us the gift, the Holy Spirit. And you know, when we believe in Jesus, we are given the Holy Spirit. And it is His will for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that when we pray according to His will, uh, we know that our prayers are answered by Him. That's why we need to believe that we have received it. When you ask God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, you ha you received it. You have received it because unless you reject it. 
it's a, a great difference between you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are not. When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is what happened. At the time, I was very much criticized by people. Well, I used to evangelize. I used to do evangelism. I went to a train station and shared the gospel with people. I went to schools and shared the gospel with students. Interestingly, uh, I found s uh, members of Unification Church. Uh, they did activities in front of a train station. And they, they, they were, they were spreading their own teachings to people who were passing by. And uh, we also started to do evangelism to there. And you know, as I um, did a lot of evangelism, I became better. I I did better and better in talking to people and I was able to win some people to Christ by my own words. But I knew that I just did it on my own, on my own efforts. And even though I forced some people to accept Jesus, I knew that they really didn't believe in Jesus. Sometimes they came to church, but they st they e they left uh, in a sh they left shortly. It was like I tried to um, put put a piece of paper in a water in water, and I tried to put it on the wall. But because I didn't use glue, it, 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 it went dry so fast, and the paper fell off from the wall. I knew that I had no power. I, I was really, I was, I thought that I had no power. I really felt powerless in my activity of evangelism, and I felt empty. I, one day I did evangelism in, a, in one train station. I talked to people who got off from train. You know, I did a lot of efforts because the hand of the Lord was not upon me. I was not successful. I talked to several people, though, and two of them decided to accept Jesus into their hearts. But I was just, I just persuaded them to do that. And what I felt was, oh, I so I felt so powerless, and I was in despair. I felt as if I was just at attacking into a rock, but the rock never um, became broken. Of course, I did not intend to kill myself, but I felt as if I, I felt so powerless, and I, I was so much in despair that I felt like committing a suicide, o although it was not really serious. Well, at the time, I was not baptized. I was not filled with the Holy Spirit. In those days, I happened to read a book re of Hudson Taylor. It was biography of him. And in this book, there was uh, written a letter uh, that changed his faith. 
when I read that, I, I knew, I found something and suddenly I got filled with such joy and very unusual thing happened to me. I didn't know much about charismatic belief, but I thought I, w I was filled with such joy that I thought maybe I could speak in tongues uh, in a time like this. So I started to move my mouth then. Suddenly, um, tongues came out of my mouth. A lot of tongues came out of my mouth. I was so surprised. And since then, as I did evangelism, I um, felt power of God. And for the next two months, 30 people were saved through me. I did a small evangelistic meeting in the park and got so worked and people were saved. So that was just after I experienced a special work of the Holy Spirit and I thought that that, that experience was just the tip of the coming revival, the coming work of revival. It was a sign or a prelude of an upcoming work of God, a time of revival. Of course, it subsided in two or three months. But I know, I know that this, that work of the Holy Spirit, that much or more, will happen when uh, full-scale work of revival will take place. One thing I know is that being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a key. Also, uh, people explain about the baptism of the Holy Spirit in two ways. One, that through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are, you are able to use the gift, gifts of the Holy Spirit. You experience the power of God, and the other way, you experience sanctification. And these two things look like uh, contradicting to, one, to each other, but I believe that these two will happen as the same together as the late Pastor Murray Urquhart wrote in his book. You know, we will, you know, I was also, when I was filled in the Holy Spirit, I received God's power, but I also experienced sanctification of God. You know, when I was saved, I really didn't know much about being sanctified, but as I spent my, the longer my Christian life lasted, I started to understand and know what it meant to be sanctified. After I 
was baptized in water. I gave my life to God, and I, I did evangelism a lot. In my heart, I determined that I would become evangelist. But no, not um, but as I was involved in God's work, I you know I didn't really experience God's work, but as I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I also started to understand how sinful I was. And uh, the Bible says that when we try to observe the law, we found ourselves unsuccessful doing that. In the beginning, I thought that I was, I deserve becoming an evangelist because I was very enthusiastic Christian. A week after I was baptized in water, I was ask, asked by my pastor to give a message in a prayer meeting. But as I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I started to know that I was not. I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve to be an evangelist. Evangelist. Oh, excuse me. Before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I got to know that I didn't deserve to be an evangelist, and I didn't. I. I felt so powerless in my evangelistic activities. I was waiting for God to call me as an evangelist, but He didn't speak that to me. God didn't speak that to me. I I always prayed that I would be able to become an evangelist, but uh, God searched my heart, and I learned that I didn't deserve, and God caused me to pray like this. God, I thought, I was ready to be an evangelist, but now I know that I don't, do not deserve. So, God, if you think that I should not become evangelist, evangelist, I will accept that because that's correct. And at the day after I prayed that prayer, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and at the same time, God gave me word, the word of God that says, I will make you a fisher of man. As I received the word, I really received the feeling of the Holy Spirit. I was given God's power when I was very powerless. And I was also, I received sanctification through the baptism of the Holy Spirit both sanctification and special power and grace of God. I was able to experience both of them through baptism of the Holy Spirit. I went to some places in the world where revival took place actually, and I was given opportunities to speak in, in front of thousands of people. Ten thousands of people. As I was involved in that kind of work, I really 
now know, I now know that it's very important for us to be to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You, in your case, you say that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then what? What's next? You need to pray. Oh, excuse me. If you think you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you need to pray. And some people, they really don't regard the baptism of the Holy Spirit as something important. And other Christians, they don't believe that they are able to receive it. Well, some churches, some churches, they do not really know much about prophecy. They have misunderstanding that to receive, to receive words of prophecy from God, they need to fast for three days. But you know, you don't fast, but you receive words of prophecy. We need to remove that this kind of misunderstanding. There is nothing. There is nothing bad about receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit is important because unless you receive it, you don't experience, experience the gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you really don't experience uh, sanctification uh, through through God, by God. For us, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit is uh, essential, and it's also essential for a lot of uh, Christians in other churches. God wants to baptize them, baptize them with the Holy Spirit. So you need to pray. You need to share this with them. You need to pray for them. The Bible clearly says that we need to be filled in the Holy Spirit continually. Uh, the Bible says that receive the, the Holy Spirit and be filled in the Holy Spirit continually, always. Uh, because you are not courageous enough, uh, you might uh, you might hesitate to pray for uh, people for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, some people they 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 bring their friends and the church members to me, so I so they would like to ask me to baptize to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you pray for them. Uh, you, you, you know, you may be very funny vessel of God, but when you pray, God will work through you. One thing you need to know is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the will of God. When you pray, for some people receiving, for their receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible says, your prayer has been answered because that's the will of God. According to God's promise, promise in the Bible. So you can say when you pray, you can tell them, oh, you, have, you now have it. You, receive, you have received it. Some people, uh, there are many, many people, they believe that they haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They say they were prayed for many times, but they haven't received it yet. Uh, but, you know, but, and I pray for them and they receive. Because the Bible says that this is the will of God. And speaking in tongues is a sign. 
God leads them who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. But some people, they believe that they will, they are unsu they were unsuccessful rec in receiving tongues because they have a misunderstanding. They just wait, opening up, op ke keeping their mouth open, but they don't st start speaking tongues, so they believe that they haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you know, but this kind of thing happens to us through our faith. You know, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul says uh, that everybody is able to speak in tongues, and healing is also a common thing written in the Bible. You can pray for healing for people, also words of knowledge and words of wisdom. You can use them. Oh. When you pray for people for receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, you need to tell them when they, uh, you know, when you pray for them for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, those people you pray for, they have the Holy Spirit in them. That means that they have seeds for the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so when they uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, these seeds will, uh, will bud. Well, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was reminded of, of what's written in the book of Acts, and I started to, I did to start speaking. I did to start moving my mouth. Then tongues came out of my mouth. And some people were told to try to speak in tongues when they were they felt urging of the Holy Spirit, which they did, and they started to speak in tongues. Sp for speaking in tongues, you need to s s make a step of faith when the Holy Spirit. I it's not that the Holy Spirit comes to you, comes upon you, and we force you to speak in tongues. That's not the, the work of the Holy Spirit. For example, healing. When you pray f for people for healing, you know, God will work and heal people. Th that happens because you actually prayed for healing. So, um, unless you do, unless you, uh, you start to operate, nothing happens. And you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because great works of God will start. You know, the late Reinhard Bonke, uh, when he held a crusade meeting in Africa and he said, Hallelujah. Uh, you know, I saw a video uh, that tens thousands of people, they f fell on the floor. But now I believe that greater works of God will take place from now because uh, 
the Latin Ray revival will start from now. And also the Bible says that you will do the work of you will do works that Jesus a kind of work that Jesus did and you will do a greater work. Uh, you know, spreading of gospel on, on, uh, is accompanied by signs and wonders. Now we are getting into a time for that. God had a purpose to use Japanese people. He had a purpose uh, for other people in the world. So let's be.